Today I'm going to show you how I upscale my 1080p footage to 4K in order to upload it to YouTube. And I gotta warn you, the process is a little ridiculous. Let's take a look. What's going on? My name's Jay, and if you've been on YouTube for just a little bit, then you've probably noticed that the compression YouTube puts on 1080p videos is pretty horrible. And the best way to get around that is to actually upload your videos in 4K. Now, this is all well and good if you have a camera that shoots 4K, but I don't. I shoot in 1080p, which means I have to upscale my footage in order to upload a 4K video. And you can run into all kinds of problems with that. If you stretch your video out too much, you start to lose quality. You might introduce noise. You might introduce artifacts. And that's actually a pretty big problem in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. If you have a really high contrasted part of your video, if you upscale it, when you export, you're gonna get all sorts of weird artifacts. It's it's a it's a mystery to me, but it happens. Now, if you have the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, you can use the super scale feature and you can actually upscale to 4K without losing quality, and that's amazing. But if you're like me and you use the free version, you're gonna have to export in 1080p and then use a media encoder in order to upscale it to 4K. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that and all of my settings right now, actually. Let's just jump in. All right, so we're here in DaVinci Resolve. You can see I've got a video put together and what we wanna do is export this. So let's head over to the deliver page. And for this export, I'm gonna use custom settings. I'm gonna give it my file name, choose the location where I want the video to be saved and I'm gonna export it as a QuickTime uncompressed RGB 10 bit. Resolution for me is custom because I do a two one ratio. So it's 1920 by 960. And then I'm just gonna click add to render queue. And then we hit start render and we wait for it to export. And once you've exported your video from DaVinci Resolve, it's time to open up your media encoder. Now I use Adobe Media Encoder because, well, I still have a Creative Cloud subscription because I use Audition all the time and I still use Photoshop and Lightroom. But if you don't have a Creative Cloud subscription, you could probably buy Adobe Media Encoder separately or you can use something like Handbrake if you're looking for a free option. For now, let's just jump into Adobe Media Encoder and I'll show you all of my export settings. All right, once Adobe Media Encoder is open, what we wanna do is come over to our media browser. We're gonna find our file and we're gonna drag it over into our queue. And then once it's loaded into the queue, go ahead and click on your preset. What you're gonna do is you're gonna come down into your video settings. Go ahead and uncheck match source for your width and height. What I'm gonna do is change 1920 to 4096. Go ahead and hit enter. And that's gonna automatically change the height since these two are linked. Go ahead, scroll down a little bit. I'm gonna check render at maximum depth. For bitrate settings, I'm gonna change that to variable bitrate two pass. And I'm gonna drag the target bitrate all the way up to 50, which is a little overkill. But like I said, we are going for the highest possible quality. We're gonna make sure that video as VR is unchecked because this is not a VR video. We're gonna come down, we're gonna check use maximum render quality. Then we're gonna hit okay. And then we're gonna come up here and we're gonna hit this little green play button and that'll start our render. Now, depending on your camera specifications and the amount of stuff that's in your video, like graphics and effects and color grading and stuff like that, this process can take as little as, you know, 10 to 15 minutes all the way up to two hours, which I've had to deal with on some of my longer videos. But I think it's worth it. You're watching a video that I uploaded in 4K right now that I use this process on, and I think that it's pretty good quality. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Now this process works no matter what is in your video, whether it's footage you shot on a camera or stock footage or footage from a webcam, or even if you did a screen recording. Now, if you wanna learn more about how I do the screen recordings for tutorials like these, make sure you check out this video right here. And if you found this video useful and you wanna learn more about video editing, camera gear, and how to make better videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you in the next video. Go watch it now.